بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum welcome to another episode of Out of Focus Self esteem how important is it for a productive society and what does Islam have to say about it Let's get talking to our sisters, Sister Jebba and Sister Shireen. Assalamu alaikum, sisters. Wa alaikum salam. Sister Jebba, let me begin with you. With self-esteem, what is your own personal experience? Do you think it's important and what is your journey in this aspect? I think people don't realize the Islamic, um, like how necessary it is in Islam and in our um, own personalities to have this quality or to have this mentality and way of thinking. Like, w you know, what is self-confidence? So I looked at the linguistic actual meaning and is to um, be confident in, in um, one's own abilities and um, worth and have self-respect and dignity. Uh, that is sometimes confused with um, self-admiration or showing off and I think that's why a lot of us practicing sisters and even non-practicing sisters and young Muslims in general th feel like, hold on a second, am I showing off, am I admiring myself too much? Not realizing that if we don't have self-confidence, we're actually putting ourselves down. Sure, and Sister uh, Shireen, what's your personal take on this? I think self-esteem um, is something that is really important for people to realize their potential and to actually um, kind of move forward and do things because a lot of the times why people are like snag stagnated in life or um, you know don't do much is, is because they feel like they can't they don't have what it takes to um, you know to stand out or to do something so I think for me personally self-esteem is something very very important that you actually need in uh, to recognize your worth you need to know what you're worth to kind of and, and everybody is worth it. Have you had any like um, personal experience with this, like lacking self-esteem, for example? Um, and in what areas do you think that, that actually happens? I'll start with you, Jibba. Um. I think in secondary school, um, subconsciously, even though I did consider and still do consider myself as someone that's confident, a confident person, um, you do start actually using um, a measure mm -hmm. of how others are and comparing myself to them. And I was nothing like these kids, you know. It, um, it was in a completely different area, different diverse groups of people from ethnic backgrounds and religious backgrounds. I wasn't like them at all. And I think the more and more I've come closer to the deen and understood religion and Islam, I've realized, hold on a second, my measure isn't about how these people measure themselves of their success and how um, and, and what their worth is. Mine is totally different. And that's when I started making the link to what is my purpose here and who am I here to please? Yeah, that's a really good point because even when uh, I was in secondary school, I, I do think naturally a lot of us go through that experience. Mm. And actually it doesn't, it doesn't go away even as you get older because even as you get older there are more uh, there are different types of expectations so during secondary school it was more about you know the gadgets we had and the looks we had etc but when you get older it's, it's similar things it's, do you have a house do you have money do you have a car do you have you know all of these standards of your success and how society defines that so all of those pressures still exist and i think a lot of the times we do need to take it back and think you know okay how much is this going to actually, you know, is this actually fulfilling me? Is this actually making me happy? And a lot of the times those things only make you feel more sad because you just realize how much I don't have, right? Yeah. Um, and I do think those expectations actually really destroy a person's, you know, self-esteem. And I, I'm just saying it from personal experience as well. Um, Sister Shireen? I think, um, I think it's important to kind of love yourself to an extent <laughs> because of the fact that, um, you know, because Allah loves you. Like, I think for a Muslim, we have that reassurance. Um, Alhamdulillah, for being Muslim, like, you know, when you realize how much you have and when you're grateful to Allah and when you recognize his bounties, you realize also a lot about yourself. Not only do you realize the kind of negatives that you, um, uh, negative things about your character and your actions, obviously you, you learn to scrutinize, you, you recognize them, but also the good things um, obviously that you are capable of, um, skills that you have, you also recognize that and in turn you, you are grateful to Allah for it and it humbles you because you know that you're not doing it yourself because Allah has instilled certain qualities in you mm -hmm. and for somebody to kind of um, shy away from it or to completely deny it because they're, they're, they're measuring themselves 
uh, they're comparing themselves with somebody who you know um, who are not who are nothing like them and they s view that as uh, something better then you are denying what Allah has put in you and you're not utilizing the kind of skills that you have the kind of qualities that you have so and you I made a really good point to even say you know uh, we ha might have bad characteristics but it's always about you know thinking of basically bettering that and be, uh, rather than just comparing ourselves to someone else and thinking oh I'm so bad it's more about okay I've got you know qualities that I can improve on mm -hmm. and then improving on them and not just making you know not just becoming stagnant in that aspect like you've mentioned earlier um, in terms of us even having this discussion what kind of environment are we living in that's created uh, a necessity of having this uh, conversations I think there's um, a lot of societal pressure and it's, it's rife and it's abundant it's everywhere from primary school to even a uni academic level me and Sharon were speaking about this before um, we came onto the show actually and it's and also the environment we live in is so materialistic mm. that we're constantly thinking about dunya and um, when you're thinking about dunya, you're always measuring yourself with money, wealth, um, the latest bag, the latest gadgets. Um, and then you don't find yourself happy. You don't find yourself being like these other people. So I think it goes back to um, the environment we're in and how to um, ensure that we're not doing that. We're not so consumed in dunya that it takes us away from our purpose and recognizing what we're actually here for. And but um, is it like, are you creating a separation between like, you know, deen over dunya, focus more on your deen rather than the dunya or? No, because they're intertwined. For example, if you're going to focus on your deen more, your religion more, ultimately you would care about uh, your education, your family, your duties. In fact, uh, when you start looking into your deen more, you become more conscious of your dunya and how you spend your time here. So I don't think we can separate them two. I think it's more about um, molding the two together and ensuring that we're fulfilling all our obligations. I think that's because kind of like is Islam has, whereas with other religions you can kind of create that separation and it has created that separation when we think about say Christianity and praying uh, on Sundays um, and the way that Islam is actually viewed like for a Muslim when, as soon as we start thinking from you know an Islamic angle kind of thing it's it's more about measuring stuff according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standards so even when it comes to material things we do it according to Allah's standards um, and again that's not to say we just abandon the you know dunya because we know so many sahaba they had you know wealth they had uh, basically the thing they were really rich in comparison if if we define it according to today's um, and even then they were loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uthman radiallahu anhu as an example um, so it's, again it's not that separation exists but rather that we look at it from an Islamic lens um, and that is what actually builds I guess you're saying confidence um, uh, Sister Shireen uh, just exactly yeah. what you said I mean the deen came for the dunya there is no dunya without the deen um, they are both linked but what you said about the Sahaba so, you know some of them were you know, extremely rich like um, Uthman ibn Affan and Abu Bakr, but that's not what defined them. That's not where they found their self worth. They mm -hmm. actually found that in Islam. Um, I think for, I think, you know, what you mentioned about materialism and how, you know, there's this constant um, pressure to have the latest things um, to kind of be all access accessorized and kind of flash off what you have. But then there's, um, it's, it's, ju it's not just material things, it's how people treat you as well. I think, you know, people, because of, you know, this idea of freedom of speech and mm. people are just so loose with their words and subhanAllah, there's no filter or censor anymore. People just say whatever and they're constantly um, uh, criticizing and um, offending and that really knocks down somebody's self-esteem. And if you're constantly, um, you know, if you're constantly being scrutinized for your faults, and not for what you've achieved or um, you know the good that you've that you have to offer then you know so, you know people it gets to a point where people think what's the point mm. and that's why that's why I say for me pers you know generally even um, self-esteem is a very very important thing because if you don't know if you don't even see your own worth how can other people see your worth so it's it's really important that um, people have self-esteem and that especially Muslims because obviously everything that you have 
it's, it's been gifted to you yeah. and you can't deny that it's, it's something that you you have to recognize to appreciate it and to utilize it yeah. in terms of you know th um, the material things and how that constantly there's a constant pressure to basically upgrade to the latest phone whether that's the latest phone the car um, even uh, whatever it is whatever whatever's trending at that time we should basically get it um, this this kind of mentality has has in fact created um, people to have low self-esteem because they always feel like well I've never got in I haven't ever got enough and um, it's also like with I think social media we see it a lot more so every time I go on to uh, what's it called uh, my Instagram I see pictures and even like Muslims obviously share pictures of what they're eating where they are and what they're doing with their friends at that time and some people just have an amazing social life which I don't have and I'm just <laughs> like <laughs> me and you both <laughs> so when I when I have that when I look at it I'm just like oh what am I doing with my life you know I'm not at this you know Hilton you know hotel and having this kind of food and looking this kind of amazing you know wearing this kind of amazing clothes um, am I not successful am I not happy um, and it really really does put you down because you expect you know your life to be exactly like someone else's uh, but again it goes back to what you're saying that maybe Allah has blessed them with something but Allah has blessed me with something as well mm -hmm. um, and it's focusing on our blessings rather than our, the things that we don't have and I think a lot of the times we tend to do that we tend to look at the people above us rather than the people who are below us yeah. um, and there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he mentions that, that we shouldn't look at the people you know above us we should look at the people below us meaning people who have less um, and that's not to say being, putting people down and thinking oh I've got better than you you know it should humble you it should humble yeah. there's also another hadith um, you know, I'm uh, just to paraphrase um, that some people, if they don't, if Allah doesn't give them this, then they won't appreciate Allah. Mm -hmm. And uh, another group of people, if, if Allah gave them these things, then they, they, basically, Allah gives according to people's nature. Mm -hmm. So there are, pe like, for example, um, there was the uh, there was a war that took place in the time of the Prophet and Sina Sina the booty was being Sina. shared out, and one man was given. Uh, I, I don't know, I can't exactly remember if he was a new Muslim, but he was given like most of the booty or mm. uh, more than everybody else. And people complained about that. Mm. And it's, uh, Prophet Sallam recognized yes. that this person, you know, it, it's like we're not all equal. Uh, we're, sorry, we are equal as human beings, but we're not all the same. Some people require more. Some people are content with less. It's, it's because of the, the, the because of their nature. Um, some people have expensive taste, some people don't. Personally, I don't. But that doesn't mean I'm not tested in other ways and I self, um, lack self-esteem in, in other areas. Yeah. Um, it's just about realising that everybody is not the same. So when you look at people that have everything, um, maybe they just, maybe they can't function without <laughs> it. Maybe you can. You know, that, that's such an amazing way to look at it because it does change the way you think about even yourself and, and the world around you. And you kind of do appreciate the fact that, you know, Allah sees something in you that maybe you don't need those things, but you you have, like you said, your own tests and your own areas to develop. Um, and that's just in a different way. So we're all heading, you know, to the same place, inshallah, Jannah. But we have different roads and our walk in life is different um, and it, it's quite empowering just thinking of it like that because I, I am literally just thinking of the way that I do compare myself when I go into social media because you do it in all different areas you don't just do it in terms of material things you also do it in terms of what you mentioned earlier character so character and personality you see uh, on social media I follow some amazing accounts on whether it's Twitter or Instagram and on those accounts you see people with you know who are really sharp thinkers and they're able to say some th some things really eloquently yeah yeah go on if you don't mind the thing is we need to see social media as a display cabinet mm. i'm sure in the asian community and to, even in other cultures our mothers have these glass cabinets yeah. where they put their best ones mm. and where do all the cracked dishes and broken glasses <laughs> go hidden away 
That's what we need to understand. People share the best part of their character and their personality, their thoughts, their outings mm -hmm. on social media. Whereas the heartbreaks, the pain, the bad days, the days where they're feeling depressed, the days where they don't want to get out of bed, no one shares that. When they're without makeup, no one shares that. So we've created a platform where we're always sharing the best moments of our life. It's a bit fake, it's a bit of a utopia. Mm -hmm. And Holmes, I completely agree with you because when we're um, going on these social media, that's what we can control. Yeah. So it goes back to us. I need to control what am I looking at. I think some sisters, um, one, of, one of our close friends, she said I actually deleted Instagram after she got married because she felt the pressure was too much to look a certain way. Even like you, the fact that you mentioned marriage, even sisters who are getting married and you know who have such an amazing life with their spouse, it's like, oh my God. It's, it's like, like we're still looking back, comparing. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, I was going to say, um, sometimes a lot of the things would not bother us much if people didn't point it out. That's not like true. certain things I can't do. And you know what? I, would have, I probably wouldn't even notice. Maybe that's not always a good thing. But for people to constantly criticize and point out, and if you genuinely can't do something or if you're really not good at something and you're constantly being criticized for it, it's, it's really unfair because not everybody is the same. Not everybody, can, you know, for example, um, if you want to talk about pressures that come from like your parents yeah. and what they expect uh, you to become um say uh, me i can't be a doctor because that's not even that's not i have no interest <laughs> in it like, it's just an example i, I have no interest in it i was actually apparently i was named after a doctor i mean this is <laughs> <laughs> this is the aspiration um i guess my parents had for me and i i done something completely different so you know, you can't force something on somebody when it's not in their nature to do that, or if they don't even have interest in it as well. People can't flourish in something that they ha they just have they just couldn't care less about. Mm. You know, not that I don't I care less about. You, you I understand know what, what I'm yeah. saying? It's, it's you have to kind of go according to someone's personality and basically help that grow rather than expect to make them grow in a way that they can't. Think. So what you said about what kind of in environment do we live in? We don't live in a nurturing environment. Mm. We don't live mm. in an environment where, you know, the seeds of kind of encouragement and um, it, it's just not a nurturing it's environment. It's robotic, it's robotic. Yeah, it's so everyone, the whole schooling process, yeah. everyone, you're just like, it's like minions kind of. Yeah. We're all taught the same way. So even at a degree level, I'm a visual learner, but we're all just lectured the same. Yeah. I think that's another thing as exactly. well. So instead of growing up as flowers, we just grow as weeds, you know? <laughs> It's a really nice analogy. Yeah, it's, it's really sad. It's really important that, you know, the foundations, you know, for an uh, uh, individual to grow up healthy, mm. um, uh, both physically and in state of mind, you need, you know, um, supporting, loving people around you. You need people who give you encouragement and praise you and, and obviously, to, uh, you know, not over the top. But you, you need that good, you need to be around good people. Yeah people that are loving and encouraging. If yeah. you're constantly around negative people that are constantly putting you down, that's that's not good for your um, development, your social de uh, development, your kind of, you know, building your character and things like that. So yeah, I think the reason why we're in this kind of environment where we don't have our society and the communities that we're living in do that is because um, the link to basic the the link that's made for people and the aspirations that are given is again materialistic and that is because we're living in a, a capitalist society a society that values monetary things a, a society that values material things and the entire like the entire environment is like this a toxic environment where you're measured against the things that you have that you can display to other people rather than the things that you have within yourself that you can give and contribute to society and that is really really different to the kind of environment that we want and the kind of envi environment we're talking about. Um, Sister Jebba, do you want to add anything to that? I think when we look at the society that we're living in and how Islam has set mm. the param parameters and the guidelines and what standards it ex um, expects from the believers, we see a complete different, like it's like a paradigm shift where mm. actually wait, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting us to be a certain way, to behave in a certain way. Islam has come to regulate our behavior, but it's all in line with our nature. Like for example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to pray uh, five daily prayers, for some of us it's like, oh my God, that's like five times that's too much how am I going to fit that in whereas if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking it from us surely there is hikmah and wisdom in it surely we can do it and surely the you know good is some khair is going to come from it and I just think 
um, when we link our actions to hold on a second, who, uh, you know, who, well, who am I doing this for? What am I doing it for? And we keep linking it to Akhirah and our purpose, then our actions are more fruitful. It's not like, oh, um, my parents want me to, for example, I go uni, I do biomedicine. It's not just about what my parents want from me. Because what about the days I, I'm not feeling like doing mm. it and I'm having a lazy day? We all have those lazy days. And then I link it back to my deen, which is holding a second. I'm accountable for every single second I spend in this university. I need to actually utilize it for something good and do something more than just a degree like I need to help people with it I need to help myself with it so I just think when we talk about this topic of self-esteem is actually understanding what does Allah want from me um, am I obeying him and what are the areas I can improve in as opposed to just putting yourself down I think a lot of the times when we um the reason that we have an environment that's basically toxic for our growth is because we are constantly measuring, like we're constantly having other people's expectations as our standards to live up to. Exactly. And the distinction you're making here is that no, 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 don't let it be other people or even your own expectations. Let it be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's expectations. Because not to say we can't have goals, sorry. Oh, yeah. Not to say that we can't have aspirations in life. Because I still want to be a certain thing. I might want a certain career. You might want to be something different. But it's just that with those things, um, the measure should be, hold on a second, you know, what is Allah giving me as an opportunity? And before I came into the show, I actually thought about it. And I thought, hold on a second. When we don't fulfill Allah's um, expectations, what are the avenues we can take? And I thought of two. One is reflection. Mm. You know when we don't live up to a certain standard or um, be a certain way that we want to be you just have a think what can I do to improve it and second is repentance because we're all going to fall short not to say that our oh, self-esteem you can't account yourself you have to do mahasaba you have to remember hold on a second I do have defects I do have things to work on but obviously in sun as humans we're all weak and we do have defects and I just think um, reflection and repentance are two avenues that all of us youngsters can take to ensure that we um, have self-esteem and self-confidence Sister Shireen, do you think that Islam builds confidence in people and how does it do that? Because a lot of the times, I might, like personally, I am, someone might think, you know, um, well, Islam sets a lot of expectations and, you know, we can't, we can't live up to those expectations. And Islam, what if someone also thinks um, that specifically for women, for example, um, Islam expects them to be quiet and modest <laughs> and not talk and not have an opinion on anything <laughs> like we do right now <laughs> um, and or meant to have you know really be really courageous and be like lions and everyone changes their profile pictures to lions <laughs> so I, I would say personally it's through Islam that I find self-esteem mm. because before Islam I was comparing myself to you know to basically I was trying to meet man-made standards mm. and expectations and they were really un unrealistic so you know from the way I look to the way I behave to um, you know my academics you know I'm just not an A star pupil what can I do yeah <laughs> but you know I realized subhanAllah this Islam was so liberating like when I started practicing you know that ayah where um, Allah does not burden anyone beyond what they can bear and this is exactly what people were doing to me. They were expecting something of me that I just couldn't give. Mm. Whereas Allah, every expectation that Allah has from you, it's doable. That's why Allah has given it to you. You know, um, He wouldn't give you something. He wouldn't require something of you if you weren't able to do it. Because Allah is the most just. Allah is Ar Rahman. You know, and I think when I start practicing as well. You know, all these kind of unnecessary things, like I overlook so many petty things just to achieve my goals. And that gave me such a, you know, that made me feel productive. Like, you know what, I'm doing something that, you know, uh, I have a higher purpose. I don't need to, what stagnates people is when they are looking at nitty gritty things and when they are, you know, like when they're literally stagnant so they're literally in one place looking at everybody and comparing themselves to, you know, to other people whereas what Islam does is it moves you forward and it reminds you that you know you are so much you know you could be you know there's a saying um, you know man can be uh, uh, man is elevated because he had you know a Muslim is elevated because they have and free will yet they choose to obey Allah so you could be better than the angels or you mm. could be worse than an animal mm. um, when you kind of you have that uh, you know you're human you have dignity you know um, whereas you choose to become like an animal become very carnal you know so I think Islam and also it really helped me in the workplace um, 
when people used to talk about nonsense and I, I know people had so many opinions about me and you know they would say things to me but you know subhanallah without being rude without you know putting people down I was able to exert myself in a sure. way that you know um, that where I got my point across um, and kind of made people think and that's ex that's Islam made me do that subhanallah yeah. whereas I think if I was to kind of try and find my self-esteem without the guidance of Islam, I think I would probably be very arrogant and think, you know what, I mean, that is the self-esteem without Islam, that you become very self-indulgent, mm. self-obsessed, and you think, you know what, the only way I'm going to um, feel secure in myself is if I put everybody else down That's and so become true. very arrogant. Yeah. So mm. definitely Islam gives you that self confidence. It does, and I think, you know, the kind of expectations we set ourselves for people, people set for us, um, they put us down in all these different areas, whether it's looks and how we how we come across as a, you know as people in our character or even our status. All of those expectations means nothing in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we should look to what has Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala given me and develop that and really think. Okay, I have a quality, or maybe I can find a quality in myself and really offer things to society so that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala loves me. Because at the end of the day, our ultimate goal is to see Allah's face. And that day, no one else's, you know, expectations will matter. No one else's words will matter because Allah and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says He does not look at, you know, our faces, but He looks at our deeds. And that is, you know, it has a complete shift in our thinking. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, sisters. Alhamdulillah. It was really, really good discussion, and I feel empowered. And jazakallah khair to our viewers. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you join us next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.